Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Jack of All Trades. I've got a good segment for you today on the Buick 455 build. Uh, so far we've done a, a little bit of work on the big block since you guys last saw us here. We've got the exhaust manifolds installed, the motor mounts, we have some brackets for power steering and uh, alternator, air conditioning, compressor. Uh, we got the little pulley there for the water pump. And so uh, we finally get to put the intake on today, but in order to do that, we have to do the uh, valley pan gasket. I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a quick rundown of, of how we're gonna install that, the measurements that take place. Uh, I know a lot of the older engines, the Buick Olds and Pontiac have these. So uh, we got this big gasket pan right here. Uh, this is from Mall. And what it comes with is uh, the, actual, the actual really thin valley pan gasket, some instructions. Uh, there's some uh, sealant that comes with this too. I got it over there on the workbench. Uh, you also have some uh, end gaskets here. So we may use these. We're going to do the measurements and I'm going to show you how to do the measurements to determine if we use those. I'm also going to show you uh, some things you need to look out for as far as the geometry of the intake and the heads in case they've ever been altered. So let's go ahead and get this thrown off here and we'll get into the details. All right, so what you actually want to do first is you want to make sure your water ports on the block are cleaned off, degreased. Uh, this is where we're going to put the RTV whenever we get to that point. We're going to clean it off now. You want to do uh, the block and the intake. And then, of course, whenever we get to that point uh, on the gasket, I'll show you what we need to do. But clean those surfaces off. Be careful if this has been machined, it could be razor sharp. Okay, and so the very first thing you do is uh, you're gonna have to dry fit the intake on the block and do your measurements, okay? So this is gonna, this is gonna involve installing the, the valley pan right now with, without any RTV on it. All right, so uh, just real quick here, this intake, uh, the valley pan is for a 71 and, and older, so 71 through uh, 70 on the 455 and then it possibly could also be used on the 400s and 430s. I know a lot of those are the same uh, So if, if you have uh, these, uh, you know, like a Frankenstein setup like I do where you have the uh, Intake is from one year and the heads are from the other. Just make sure that if you're using earlier heads uh, You can use the later intakes uh, You just can't do it the other way around. You can't do the earlier intakes with the later heads because you're going to have some of the exhaust crossovers that are going to be exposed. Uh, you'll probably, if, if you do run into that problem, I think there is a gasket you can get specifically to alleviate that. But I, I haven't specifically done any research on that because I have a 71 uh, intake and a set, a set of 70 heads. Okay. All right. So it sits in there pretty good just like that. All right, so I'm just going to have this lined up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is not how it's going in there, but it's holding itself pretty good um, right now. So we're going to put the intake on now, and I'm going to show you their measurements. All right, we're back here at the rear of the engine. Uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to line this all up the best you can and um, take measurements on each side of this gap. This is where that uh, neoprene seal goes, okay? There's one that goes on the front and the back. Uh, line it up with the holes in the in the heads with the intake and Then you're going to take some measurements here to see how even it is now just so you know The geometry of how these heads fit with the intake is What they speak about is specifically the angles here for the heads how they're cut need to match the angles for the intake and how it's cut, if it's cut at all. If it's not been adjusted, you'll be fine. If there's been no machining done. If there has been, uh, there's either corrective machining uh, that you could do if it doesn't line up, or if, for example, uh, if, if this sets up, if the intake sits up too high, then the heads need to be machined down lower so it'll sit further down. If it sets too low, uh, you can get an additional Felpro gasket to just go on the intake side of the head to set it up a little bit higher to, to fill that discrepancy so that it's not off. So here's what I do. Uh, you need to measure both sides 
It doesn't have to be a, a caliper like this. This makes it easier, but it could specifically just be a, a ruler. But what you want to do is you want to measure that gap on each side and try to get it even, okay? The closer those two numbers are together, the closer it is to being even. So 5.8, 5.9 on one side, uh, just shy of five on this, on this side. So it needs to come up a little bit and the holes that are in it can, can give you uh, an indicator. The holes of the intake uh, bolts can give you an indicator kind of where you need to be on it. Okay, five there, 5.8 there. Okay, getting real close. All right, so once you get those to where they're almost the same number, then you want to just measure in the middle here to see what your gap is. Okay, 5.5 millimeters. All right, let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so the instructions say uh, here specifically if uh, you need to measure the, the gap on the intake and the back of the block as well, you need to measure uh, the thickness of this, this end seal here. Now, what you might notice is, is there's a channel here on the bottom and a little ridge on the top, okay? You're not measuring this part. You're going to measure the part that's that's actually going to matter, which is going to be uh, here on the side. And you can put something on that real quick and measure it. Uh, it's five and a half, just slightly over five and a half. And it, as you might remember, we measured that gap as five and a half uh, just about. So uh, for those of you who might need to measure this, though, and, and take that 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 uh, number and figure it out uh it says here that the the, the general rule is is the gap if the gap is less than 75 percent of the thickness of this then you'll need to use actually the just the gasket you won't need to use this this rubber seal at all you can use uh rtv to block it if it's more than that far more and you notice that you put this seal in and there's more there's still more gap above it then what you're going to need to do is use this seal in conjunction with some RTV on top, okay? You don't need it on the bottom, just on the top, and that will seal your gap. As well, when you're installing this, you also want to put, and I'll show you when you get there, you want to put some RTV here where it mates with the head and the intake as well. So uh, what we have here is we had 5.5. So how do we figure that out? We have the 5.5, and then uh, we just divide it by 4, okay? So that gives us the 25% value. So that's 1.37, and then to get the 75% value, you multiply that by 3. So 4.125 millimeters would be uh, the 75% mark. So if it was less than that, then you wouldn't want to use this seal, okay? And uh, so ours is right on par, so we're going to use this seal, and it should made up just fine. We shouldn't need any RTV at all. And so let's go ahead and get that installed, and I'll show you how to put everything on. All right, we're back here at the engine. Uh, we're going to pop this uh, intake valley pan out now. We don't need it. We, I have the end gap uh, seals here uh, to kind of show you what we're going to deal with. So uh, as you can maybe see here, it doesn't quite touch the heads on either side. Uh, so you would want to put some of this um, RTV that comes with the, the kit. You want to squeeze some of that in there. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put it on both sides of the ends as well as I'm going to take the valley pan off. I'm going to put some of the RTV around the water jacket openings on both ends. Okay. And then I'm going to put the valley pan back in and I'm going to put RTV on this side of the valley pan so that we have it on both sides sandwiched in. And then I'm going to cover the, this, the corners, the ends with the, the gasket as well, the sealer. And, uh, then we'll, we'll be able to wrap it up at that point. We're gonna put the intake back on, and then we will also um, uh, hand tighten everything. Let it sit up for about 15 minutes, and then torque the spec. Okay, again, you wanna make sure the surfaces are clean. 
We've already cleaned these off here. Um, if you have a different type of engine uh, that has more than just what we have here, the four on the Buick, you, you need to seal all of those as well. It is not recommended to, to actually put any sealer around um, the actual intake, the air, the air chambers, because uh, if it dries up and it gets in there, it could, could cause more harm than good. So this stuff sets up pretty quick. So once you get it going, you don't want to um, wait too long. I know some um, some engines and the coolant is they don't mix well with RTV, so make sure you actually know if it it will on your specific engine. Uh, I know there's a lot of different engines that have these valley pans. As I mentioned earlier, Buick Old Pontiac, I believe Land Rover, which uh, Buick shared some engines with them for a while. It smells a lot like vinegar. I'm doing Easter eggs. Okay, gonna get a little more over here. All right, after this, the valley pan gasket will go on. Put some in the corners uh, from the head down to the uh, the block. Okay, make sure all the ports are lined up. It's pretty good. All right, so now the valley pan gasket here is, I'm just gonna put a little more on top since it's going over that. Should all squish out. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit around the outside of this. Uh, valley pan gasket as well. Okay. All right, we're done. We're going to let that set up for a few minutes. I uh, said 10 to 15 minutes and then uh, we're going to put the intake on, let it set up for a few more minutes and then we're going to torque it down to spec for the intake and we'll be done at that point. The uh, valley pan gasket has some ridges on it to help seal. That's where I'm putting this at because that's going to be the contact surface. Put the insoles in here. Add a little bit more to the top of those because that's where the gap is. All right, we'll let it sit up and come back. All right, 
I've made double sure that my intake uh, is cleaned off. Okay, I'm gonna set it on there. Gonna check for alignment. Okay. Looks good. Making sure this all looks good here. It doesn't look like it's gonna push out. Okay, all the holes are lined up. So now we're gonna do hand tight on the bolts. Since this is a 71 intake, I have um, all the same bolts, all the same bolt links. These intakes are heavy. Now, I forgot to mention, if you uh, had an Elderbrock or one of the aftermarket uh, TA Performance intakes, the aluminum intakes, um, you're not going to have to worry about uh, the exhaust crossovers if you have like a 72 to 74 heads. Uh, they're already going to be blocked off. So uh, I believe in those situations you would get the same intake that I have now for the 70 and 71 and it would block, uh, the, it would actually block those, those crossovers and the intake itself would help hold it down. All right, we're gonna let it set for uh, about another 10 minutes and then we'll torque it down to uh, 55 foot-pounds of torque, which is what the, uh, the manufacturer calls for. All right, so we've let it set for about 15 minutes here to let everything set up. Now we can actually torque it down per spec to 55 foot-pounds. Uh, the actual torque sequence for the Buick 40, 455 is going to be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay? So let's go ahead and get to that. I'm going to do it in a couple stages. I'm not going to take it all at once. Alright, last two for the first stage. Alright, so now I'm going to take it all the way back and we're going to torque it down to the, the actual torque, the actual 55. and 12 and done all right that's a wrap up right there so quick and easy video uh just a little valley pan tutorial 
Uh, make sure the, the key there is to make sure that you do actually measure the end gap uh, on the intake and the block so that you can use those seals if you need to. Again, remember, if that gap is less than 75% of the, the, the actual thickness of the, the gasket, you can't use it. If it's more, far more than the actual gasket, you may have to add a little bit of RTV to the top. But that's about it. Uh, the valley pan gasket is important just to keep the oil out of the PCV valve, okay? And keeping it from getting sucked up into the vacuum and possibly burning off in the system. So anyway, uh, I hope you like this video. Uh, if you wanna see some more on the Buick or anything else I do, just hit that subscribe button and hit the like if you, if you liked it. So anyway, take care and have a good day. Goodbye. Okay,